Welcome back to Mike Ferry TV. As you now probably have noticed, if you've been watching, we are spending several weeks on building your skills, specifically building your listing skills. I, I believe that knowledge equals confidence. I believe that ignorance equals fear. Okay, let's simplify that. If you know what to say and what to do, you have confidence to go out and do it. If you don't know what to say and don't know what to do, you're going to have fear, which keeps you from proceeding and doing anything, or in most cases, more than what you've done in the past. So I guess the first question we have to look at as we build our skills is how confident are you? How knowledgeable are you? Okay, do you want to go against me on a listing presentation? I don't think you do. No, there's a bunch of you from tens of thousands we've trained that will beat me. But the majority can't beat me because you don't have the confidence, you don't have the knowledge. But when you're ignorant of anything, and this is normal, you would, of course, have some fear. And, of course, most people just don't understand that. I, I, I can relate a story to you. Many, many years ago, flying from Los Angeles Airport to Honolulu, Hawaii. I was doing a seminar over there, and uh, United Airlines, first class, 747. And in those days, the 747, two-story plane, had a beautiful lounge and bar upstairs. And that's where the first class passion to go and relax. So as soon as the plane took off, I ran upstairs and sat down and relax. And, you know, it's such a wonderful experience. Hope you get to have it sometime. And uh, a man walks up and sits down next to me. And the flight attendant walks over and, and he orders a pretty strong drink and he drinks it like this and orders the second one, drinks it like that, orders the third one. I said, wow, sir, I said, uh, um, pretty heavy shots of liquor there. He said, this is my very first flight ever. And this man was probably in his 60s. I said, you're kidding, is that right? Now, in my business, you know, I had to fly every single day and I've done that for 50 years. So I, I'm not real, it's hard for me to accept the fact somebody would be that upset or nervous or scared. I said, okay. Well, just then the pilot walks out to go to the restroom. And in those days, the pilot could still walk out without all the security devices we have today. And I said to the pilot, sir, could, could I ask you a question? He said, fine. He was tall, distinguished, gray-haired pilot, you know, the, the perfect pilot. I said, this uh, man here is on his first flight today. He's a little bit nervous. Well, the pilot sat down and said, well, sir, maybe I can help you overcome. So we have five hours of flying. I don't want you to be nervous. I want you to enjoy it. Um, what's, your, what, what's your challenge or your problem here? Listen to what the guy said. First question, who's flying the plane? <laughs> Logical question. The pilot said, well, we're, we're on automatic pilot and we have two more pilots in the cockpit. We're okay. Then the guy asked this question. Listen to this. He said, Captain, how do you fly west into the sunshine for five hours without hurting your eyes? What an unusual question. And the captain, forgetting he was talking to a man that had never flown before, said, well, it's simple. We cover the windshield with tinfoil so we don't have to see the blinding sun. The guy almost had a heart attack and passed out. And when the captain saw the guy's response, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I don't think the guy was kidding at all. They probably do cover it because what are you going to see at 35,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean? A bird fly by? I don't think so. Well, you see, the lack of experience, the lack of knowledge, the lack of understanding creates the fear. How strong is your knowledge of your listing presentation? How strong is your knowledge of how to pre-qualify a seller? So what we have to look at here is this, okay? If I want to build my skills, I'm going to make a strong suggestion to you, okay? Offer to do a listing presentation at a sales meeting in front of the entire company and do it in the next 30 days. Even if you have to take the script cards we offer and smile and read them to them, I want you to do this to bolster your confidence. Oh, no, you're going to have a lot of fear over the next 30 days preparing for it. But if you'll commit to your broker, the manager, the sales team, I'm going to make a listing presentation live in front of the whole group. If you'll, if you'll commit to that, which I know you can do and should do, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have a lot more confidence. I wrote down next teach a listing presentation class. Spend the next 30 days really working on that confidence and knowledge and that presentation, and then make that listing presentation live. Now do this. I'm dead serious. Make one live in front of the office and then offer the broker to teach a listing presentation class on how you develop the skills to make this happen. Then I, I go a step further on developing skills. I said, take your skills a step further. Record and review your prospecting calls 
your pre-qualifying calls and record the listing presentation. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. See, so start recording what you do. Professionals do this all the time. They record, they review, they record, they review. Professional basketball players, baseball players, football players, college teams, golfers, tennis players. They record what they do, then they look at it to see what they do right, what they do wrong. My wife, Sabrina, and our neighbor, Sally, are, are working real hard right now to become good golfers. They're going to play in a golf tournament together. In our, one of our garages at our home, we have a full professional golf simulator where you can stand in there and you can take golf shots and practice, and it's all up on the screen and everything is being recorded. And then after they hit their shots, we'll turn it off and then we'll watch a film of what they just did so we can help Sabrina and Sally critique what they're doing and become better. This is what people do. This is what people do all the time. Now, watch this thought in relationship to building skills. Professionals always practice, amateurs never do. Double the amount of daily practice you're doing or at least start practicing. We have tens of thousands of agents that every single day are role-playing and practicing their listing skills prospecting, pre-qualifying, the listing presentation, handling objections. We've got all these groups that do this on the phone with each other all the time. This is what professionals do. Uh, we had a fellow that worked for us for many years that played professional football, and I said to him, okay, you played pro football. How many hours a week did a team practice for a one-hour game? He said, 70. I said, they practice 70 hours a week? He said, yeah, for a one-hour game. Can you imagine if a real estate person practiced Seven hours a week, not 70. Can you imagine how good you'd become? If you, See, here's what I want you to understand. You have to become robotic in your skills, meaning that your skills are so practiced, so rehearsed, it's muscle memory like a golf swing, like, like a tennis shot, or me speaking to you. It's robotic. I know what to say because I've said it over and over and over and over and over and over times about 2 million. I don't have to sit here and say, gosh, what am I going to say next? What should I say to this audience today? It comes out of my mouth because I've practiced so much that it's automatic. I want you to become that way. Now, how do you become that way? Through practice. Take the listing script, take the pre-qualifying script, sit down by yourself for 30 minutes with a smile on your face, lots of energy, read the questions out loud. Do it every day for the next 30 days. Practice every phase of the listing process every single day. For Tony Smith, wonderful agent of Southern California, powerful, powerful agent. In front of our retreat, I think it was last year, the year before, Tony made a statement which I think caught a lot of people off guard. Tony said, well, when I first got into real estate, I took all of Mike's scripts and I spent an hour in the morning, hour in the afternoon practicing the scripts, reading them out loud. People look like that. It's two hours a day in practice. But now Tony played college football. And in college football, you practice three or four hours every day. So when Tony was told to practice, it was part of his routine. You got to start practicing. And then I wrote down next, although it may sound a little bit strange to all of you, Upgrade your image as you build your listing skills. Have at least one good outfit that you wear when you're listing property. Men and ladies, upgrade your image. Because, unfortunately, people are very judgmental. Now think about this. You knock on the door at 7 o'clock for a listing presentation. They open the door. And many times they will decide in virtually one or two seconds if they're going to list with you based on what they see. When they open that door, what do they see? I'm amazed. I do seminars all over the world, and I'm amazed at the attire, the look, the lack of professionalism. Upgrade. If you want to become great, when you have a wonderful image that is pleasing to the eye, and you don't have to be a beauty queen, you don't have to be Clark Gable handsome, Robert Redford, but you have to make sure that you're not the counter opposite of that. Because even if you have good skills, if you look like a bum, guess what? They judge you like a bum. You have good skills and a professional image, all of a sudden the reception is much better. Now watch the next point on becoming a great listing agent through skills. Write out in detail 5, 10, maybe 15 reasons that a seller should pick you over any other agent in town. 
and then weave those into your presentation itself. Do you have good, valid reasons why they should select you? I mean, are they valid really? No, really, are they valid? Well, I'm really a good agent and, you know, we work for an office and we're a big, happy family and everybody loves each other in the office. Give me a break. Look at it. Ah, that doesn't work. They don't care about that. You know, what are you going to do to help me get my home sold? Think about this. Every seller wants to know the answer to this question. What are you going to do to get my home sold? And if you can't walk in with 5, 10, 15 good, valid reasons why they should list with you, they list with somebody else. Because, see, they're going to list with the person they feel has the confidence to get the home sold. They're going to pay the commission. People say to me all the time, why do sellers ask us to cut commissions? Because there's no validity to the presentation that you make. And then, of course, I wrote down the next thought. Okay, and this is so important. If I want to develop great skills, start studying the versatility aspects of working with people by studying the personality styles of working with people. I mean, you, you know this because you've heard it a thousand times. There's the driver personality. There's the expressive personality. There's the amiable personality. And there's the analytical personality. Unfortunately, we can't only work with those people in our personality box. We have to work with all four. We never know till we walk in many times who they're going to be. So versatility, which is a skill, the ability to adapt to a variety of people in a variety of situations in a variety of ways. How well do you adapt to the people that you're working with and talking to? Do you adapt? Can you adapt? Okay, do you have the skill to walk into a house with a driver and make a presentation, although you may be amiable? Do you have the skill to shut up if you're expressive and ask questions when you're talking to an analytical who doesn't really want to listen to all your psycho babble that you want to tell her how wonderful you are? Versatility, the ability to adapt. I believe that every one of you can add 10 to 15 to 20 transactions to your annual production just by developing high versatility. And then the last thought for today, strongly, strongly consider learning the market stats before you walk into the house. What, what is selling? What's not selling? Why is it selling? Why is it not selling? What are the number in each category that are selling? What are the price ranges that are selling the most quickly? How many expirations do they have? How many new properties are coming on the market? What's the competition going to be? See, if I want to be strong, I have to support it with facts and figures. Facts and figures are statistics. Most sellers want more than what it's worth. The statistics help them understand the value of what you're trying to do. Well, I think the next month or so is going to be an exciting ride for all of us if we want to learn the skills and develop the skills to become a great listing agent. Remember, two ways to make money. List property, show property to buyers. One's the employer, one's the employee. One gets paid a lot, one does not get paid as much. Which person do you want to be? We'll talk about it more next week. See you then.